Hi guys and welcome to section 2 of this course. Now in this section we'll be taking a look at monitoring, metrics and analysis which is domain 1 as per the exam blueprint that you need to cover in order to prepare for the AWS Certified SysOps Administrator exam. So let's get started. In this section we're going to be taking a look at Amazon CloudWatch, monitoring AWS services including EC2, EBS, RDS, Elasticash, Amazon Trusted Advisor, Amazon CloudTrail, Amazon Config, Amazon Organization and Consolidated Billing, and how to monitor AWS charges. We'll start with an introduction to CloudWatch, part one. In this video, we'll take a look at introduction to CloudWatch, metrics and custom metrics, dashboards, and CloudWatch alarms. So, what is CloudWatch? Amazon provides a monitoring service to oversee its core resources, such as AC2 instances, DynamoDB tables, RDSDB instances, etc. CloudWatch can be used to collect and track metrics, collect and monitor log files, set alarms, and automatically react to changes in your AWS resources. By using CloudWatch, you will have access to system-wide visibility into resource utilization, application performance, and operational health. You can access Amazon CloudWatch using the CloudWatch console, CLI, APIs, and SDKs. And with Amazon CloudWatch, you can specify parameters for a metric over a time period and then configure alarms or automated actions when a threshold is reached. Okay, so we have an example here of a website that is being serviced by a fleet of EC2 instances across two availability zones. They're sitting behind an elastic load balancer and we're using Route 53 to route website requests. We've also configured CloudWatch with CloudWatch alarms so that you get alerted whenever a particular threshold has been met. And in order to send you those alerts, we're using SNS notifications. Let's say, for example, that the CPU utilization on these web servers goes to 80% or above, and that lasts for a duration of time. You can configure CloudWatch to trigger auto-scaling groups to launch additional servers so that you can alleviate the load on the existing servers and ensure that you're able to meet the performance requirements for your website. There are also services that are used with CloudWatch in order to provide a complete end-to-end -end solution. So we have the Amazon Simple Notification Service, for example, that is used to send out messages to subscribing endpoints. For example, to get email alerts when the CPU of your instances goes over 80% for a duration of time. We also have auto-scaling, which will automatically launch or terminate EC2 instances based on policies, health checks, and schedules. We have Amazon CloudTrail, which will be used to monitor and audit calls made to CloudWatch API for your account. CloudTrail can then be used to enable CloudWatch to write log files to an S3 bucket, for example. And we have AWS Identity and Access Management, which enables authentication and access control for Amazon CloudWatch. Okay, so let's move on to talking about CloudWatch metrics. So metrics are essentially time-ordered sets of data points that are published to CloudWatch. They contain information from EC2 instances, EBS volumes, RDS databases, and elastic load balances, for example, and will contain key information in order to help you identify the performance of these services and resources on your AWS account. There are two types of monitoring services available on Amazon CloudWatch. We have basic monitoring, which is where AWS services and resources report a number of metrics at no charge to CloudWatch. And then for a number of services, we also have detail monitoring, which will include additional metrics, more frequently reported metrics, and statistics aggregation. Now I want to give you one exam tip, and that is Amazon EC2 offers basic monitoring at five minute intervals and detail monitoring at one minute intervals. So remember this one for the exam. Okay, so in addition to standard CloudWatch metrics, we also have something called custom metrics. Now CloudWatch will report metric data on all of the AWS services and resources. However, you can also use CloudWatch to monitor and report on data produced by your applications and the services that you deploy on Amazon Web Services. These can include the ability to monitor the time to load a web page, request error rates, number of processes or threads on your instances. You can publish your own metrics to CloudWatch using the command line interface or an API. So let's take a look at an example. With regards to EC2 monitoring, standard CloudWatch metric will include CPU, network, and disk utilization at the host layer. However, you can also set up custom metrics to include the monitoring of RAM usage as well as disk space availability on a specific EC2 instance. Okay, let's take a look at CloudWatch metric retention. Now, CloudWatch metric supports the following three retention schedules. We have one minute data points which are available for 15 days, five minute data points available for 63 days, and one hour data points available for 455 days. Now, a couple of key points to note here. You can get metric data using the Get Metric Statistics API call 
and metrics cannot be deleted, but they automatically expire after 15 months if no new data is published to them. Okay, so in addition to metric retention, let's talk about metric granularity. So CloudWatch enables you to store metrics at one minute granularity. Sometimes metrics are received by CloudWatch at varying intervals, like three minutes or five minutes, depending on the AWS service that you're using. Now, with regards to custom metrics, we have standard resolution with data having one minute granularity and high resolution with data having granularity of one second. Metrics are stored at one minute resolutions in CloudWatch and you can define a metric as high resolution by setting the storage resolution parameter to one in the put metric data API request. Okay, so next let's go ahead and take a look at our dashboards and we'll jump on into a lab to do a dashboard demo. Okay, so this is my AWS account and we're going to be looking at how to set up CloudWatch dashboards in this demo. Now, before we do that, I want to take you to my EC2 console. I've actually launched two servers in my EC2 console. One's a Windows server, the other is a Linux server. And you can actually look at these servers individually and get some quick snapshot overview of the kind of monitoring that we have available right from within the EC2 console itself. So we can look at things like CPU utilization, discrete, discrete operations, network in, discrete operations, discrete, etc. So a quick snapshot of the kind of metrics that you have available on EC2 instances. Now, if we go back to the AWS Management Console, CloudWatch is available to you in the management tool. So I'm just going to quickly open that in a new window. So let's just click on that tab, and this is our CloudWatch console. Now, as you can see, you have quick snapshot information available to you here. We have some metric summaries, alarm summaries, as well as the current service held for CloudWatch. On the left-hand side, you can click on dashboards, and you can start building your dashboards for your environment. Now, remember, you can create multiple dashboards for specific business use cases. You might have one for production environment, one for test and dev, etc. So let's go ahead and click on Create Dashboard. Give it a name, click Create Dashboard. You'll then be presented with this dialog box that allows you to add various widgets to your dashboard. So you can add line graphs, stack area, number, and some free text. So let's go ahead and first set up some titles for our dashboard. Click Configure. And this is where you can add various text elements in your dashboard. So you can create things like headings, paragraphs, links, buttons, tables, as well as labels. If you want to learn more about how to use this particular markdown language, click on the Learn More tab, and you can actually go through the syntax required in order to build your text element within the dashboard, which will allow you to effectively define things like links, lists, buttons, etc. Back to my CloudWatch dashboard, if I go ahead and just remove all of this, I'm just going to leave the heading section there and give it a heading. And maybe the subheading could be servers, something like that. Go ahead and click Create Widget. And that's it. You've got your first widget in place. We can then subsequently add more widgets to our environment. So we can go for a line graph. And this is where you actually specify the particular resource that you're trying to monitor. So if we scroll down here, we can go and select something like EC2. I'm just going to scroll this up here a little bit so we can see it in detail. Click on the per instance metrics. These are my various servers. So let's say, for example, I want to be monitoring my Linux service and I want to see what the CPU utilization is for my Linux web server 01. So I can go ahead and click create widget on that one. And there we go. We have a widget in place. We can make this a little bit smaller. I can add another widget. This time I can go for a number. And perhaps now I want to take a look at, um, again, back to my EC2 instance, click on the per instance metrics. Select the Linux web server, because that's the one that I'm specifically focused on at the moment. And I might want to check what the network in is like. So go ahead and click Create Widget. And there you have another widget in place. So you can effectively build an entire dashboard to get snapshot visibility into your environment and the various resources that you deploy in your environment. Once you've completed this, make sure you remember to save the dashboard. And then that dashboard will be available to you to have quick visibility into your production environment. Okay, so as per our previous example, where we have a fleet of EC2 instances sitting behind an elastic load balancer, 
and the CPU utilization for those instances is gone over 80% for a duration of time, let's say 15 minutes or half an hour, you can easily send out a notification to alert you to the fact and maybe also get auto scaling to basically launch additional instances in order to cope with the load. An alarm can be in any one of three states, either the OK state, the alarm state, or the insufficient data state. The OK state basically means that it's within the threshold. The alarm state is where it's crossed the threshold for a given specified period of time. And insufficient data basically means that it hasn't collected enough data yet in order to report on. Right, so that brings us to the end of this video in the course.